This is an 06 Jetta diesel TDI. Customer complains every once in a while it will stop making power like the turbo quits. They can pull over and turn the key off and turn the key back on and the power will come back. This is commonly referred to as lint mode. Lint mode is the computer's reaction to a boost related trouble code. It does have a check engine light on with a PO299 low boost trouble code. Um, we test drove the vehicle and it seemed to lack power overall. But we never got the lint mode or the PO299 to reoccur. Probably if we had drove it further or got it under the right circumstances, it would have limped and triggered the code. Uh, we took some graphs on the test drive to uh, help us figure out what was going on with this. Okay, what we're looking at is a graph taken during the test drive. I take a snapshot of one wide open throttle pull. A wide open throttle pull is one event of flooring it during the test drive to graph boost control. On this graph the red is RPM, the green is commanded boost, the yellow is actual boost, and we're going to ignore this one because it's irrelevant for now. At this point I'm just coasting along and here the commanded boost line goes vertical because I floor it. When I floor it the computer commands boost to this level and command stays here for the whole wide open throttle pull. At this point I have to back out of the throttle uh, for traffic or whatever reason and the green line drops to the bottom of the graph. The yellow line is actual boost as measured by the map sensor. So here at the bottom there's basically no boost at all and when I floor it it starts coming up and at this point it reaches very close to what the computer is commanding but boost is coming up very very slowly the computer is wanting this much boost at the green line but for almost 50 percent of this time boost is way below what the computer expects to see the slow rise of boost is the problem that causes the overall lack of power and i bet it's causing the po299 in limp mode to diagnose this, I'll start with taking a look at the vacuum system that the computer uses to control boost. These are the checks we do on the vacuum system for an underboost code. Get rid of this cosmetic cover. Right here is the turbo actuator. That has a link. It's a vacuum diaphragm. You can see the vacuum hose on it here and it has a linkage that runs down to the VNT turbo and that adjusts the amount of boost uh, based on the computer's control from this solenoid. This is a turbo boost solenoid or N75 and the vacuum hose runs over here to uh, control the amount of boost. So to do these checks we would start with pulling this vacuum hose off here. Grabbing our handheld vacuum pump put the hose on the actuator and the first check you want to do is just to see if the actuator seals vacuum so you pump it up and you just want to see that it holds vacuum That's probably good enough. As you can see, the needle's holding steady, so it is holding vacuum. And the next check we would do would be to watch the rod underneath the actuator. We off camera would pump up the turbo actuator diaphragm, and we see the rod move. And then when I release vacuum, it moves back. You'd want to look at it and see that it's moving full travel. I've already done that, so I'm not going to bother trying to get it on camera but you can see the rod moving and this one is working good the rod is moving and the actuator holds vacuum so the next check we would want to do is to see if the turbo solenoid or the N75 is able to control vacuum to the diaphragm so we take our hose off here this is our vacuum pump handheld vacuum pump that I'm dropping off camera and put that in the hose there and we're just going to use this as a vacuum gauge to see if uh, the turbo solenoid is able to control vacuum 
I hope you can hear me over the sound of the engine, but it needs to be on in order to do the vacuum checks uh, to see if the boost solenoid is working because the boost solenoid is provided vacuum by a vacuum pump that's driven by the camshaft. So if the engine isn't running, you have no vacuum to make checks with. So we'll test the output of the N75 boost solenoid here in the output tests. Have to adjust our camera just a bit. And I usually do these. That tests the EGR valve, which we're not concerned with. That tests the AC, which we're not concerned with. And notice it says activate here. That's gonna check the solenoid valve for boost pressure in 75. And when I click activate, you'll see that the computer is now turning the solenoid on. And then wait just a moment, now it turns it off and then you wait another moment it'll turn it back on and it'll keep doing that for a while now let's look at our vacuum gauge now you can see it is active that just turned the solenoid on and now the solenoid is turned off now the solenoid is turned on so the solenoid is working at least partially but we certainly should see more vacuum than that. I'm gonna turn the camera off real quick and we'll check source vacuum to see how much uh, vacuum it's supposed to have. Okay, so here is our source vacuum. This is our vacuum pump right here. This is actually a combination pump, pumps fuel and vacuum. But uh, you see over here this tube comes out of the vacuum pump and has one tube that goes over here under the accordion that goes over to the brake booster to provide it with uh, vacuum for power brakes. And this small hose here provides vacuum to all the vacuum controls which I think is just the turbo solenoid there and the flapper valve that's in the EGR cooler. Okay, so I put a test hose on the source vacuum, running it over to our vacuum pump, which we're simply using as a gauge right now. And I'll start the car and see what our source vacuum is. With the car running, source vacuum is about 27 inches of mercury. And our N75 solenoid was only putting out five inches of vacuum. So either the N75 isn't doing its job or source vacuum getting to the N75 is very poor. So we know our vacuum pump is putting out 25 plus inches of mercury, but our N75 was only outputting five inches of mercury. So either the N75 isn't doing its job and and isn't providing the turbo actuator with enough vacuum or that vacuum coming from the vacuum pump isn't making it to the N75. So we need to check vacuum actually at the N75 to see if it's getting the source vacuum from the, inje from the vacuum pump to the N75 solenoid. So with our engine running, and our vacuum gauge hooked to the supply of the N75 solenoid. We have five inches of vacuum, which is not enough. Our supply was 25 plus. So we need to figure out where the vacuum is going. We obviously have a leak somewhere. So I took a good look at the vacuum hoses, looking for vacuum leaks, and I didn't see anything obvious. I even pulled some of them out as an assembly and checked them and I didn't find anything wrong. But what I did find was that if I remove this hose and plug it, the vacuum would come up to normal. Let me show you. So here's our vacuum gauge hooked to our source vacuum on the N75. And if I plug this with my finger, Vacuum comes up, unplug it with my finger, vacuum comes down.
also after realizing that plugging this hose made my source vacuum at the N75 come back to normal, I noticed this hole. Plugging that hole also brought my source vacuum back to normal. So here's our vacuum. Still very poor. Here's our hole in the valve cover. I'm going to plug it with my finger there. And you can see our gauge went way up. So I release it, plug the hole again, release it, plug the hole again, and I think we found our problem rather easily. I found this hole in the valve cover, and I found that if I plugged it, the vacuum would come up. At first, I incorrectly assumed that these round areas were part of the crankcase vent system with a rubber diaphragm in them, similar to gas VWs, and that the hole was a vent for those diaphragm because some of the gas VWs had a vent hole for the crankcase vent diaphragm. But Henrik from Ireland, on a thread for the TDI Club, pointed out that this area of the valve cover was the vacuum reservoir. It was built into the valve cover. Later, I dug this valve cover out of the trash and found that somebody had removed the top cover and drilled this hole. You can see very obviously based on the hole, the back side of the hole, there's a shard there from the drill. That somebody has drilled this, removed this cover, drilled the hole, glued the cover back on. Why they did this, I have no idea. But the end result is... Uh, it needs a valve cover to fix it. So here is our new valve cover, Volkswagen only, meaning it's expensive. Just for comparison purposes, we hooked up our vacuum gauge. We'll pump it up, see if it holds vacuum. And it does. I don't need to pump it up any farther. I know it's supposed to hold vacuum. I was just wanting to demonstrate. Normally after you pull a valve cover on a, a BRM style TDI, you would do want to do a real close check of the camshaft to make sure it's not worn. Uh, this one we just happened to put a camshaft in six months ago or so. Not much chance of there being an issue there. We'll take a good look at it anyway, off camera. Okay, one last check before we go drive the car and see if it's fixed. This is um, supply to the N75 boost solenoid again with our vacuum gauge on it. And our supply is 25 inches of vacuum plus. So I wanted to show one more thing, the output of the N75 solenoid when it has good supply vacuum to it. So I hooked to this hose again that normally goes on the turbo actuator and I have my vacuum gauge hooked to it and as you can see it has 20 inches of vacuum and that's probably what it should be normally at idle. Um, Let's go ahead and control it with the bi-directional controls on VAGCOM again and see how it's supposed to behave with a normal situation. So we go to our output tests again. Just zoom through all these. I should probably zoom in there. Click through all these quickly until we get to the boost solenoid. And now we're here, we click activate, and it's turning on and off again. Off. On. Off. On. And 
that's what good output should be from the N75 boost control solenoid on a 06 Jetta with a TDI BRM engine. Finished the test drive on this 06 Jetta and the car is definitely fixed. Not only does it have the power it's supposed to, the car drives like a dream. It was a little underpowered before, but it was capable of making full boost. It just took a long time to get there. The car now has tons of power on tap. It will squeal the tires when you accelerate real hard, and uh, the traction control goes active because of that, and it just drives like a dream now. I'm pretty sure these customers were living with this problem the whole time they had the car. I don't know why the hole was drilled in the valve cover, but it certainly was causing a huge problem with this car. I want to thank Heinrich from Ireland on the TDI Club for pointing out that that was a reservoir and that hole didn't belong there. I took some graphs on the test drive. I'll go over those. I wanted to show a graph of boost control during the test drive after the fix. And you can see in this graph, boost comes up nice and quickly. It, the yellow line comes up and meets the green line within the space of one graticule. It maintains good boost control all, all um, during the wide open throttle pull. In comparison to the previous graph where there's a lack of boost, the um, computer commands this much boost and it takes five graticules before it gets gets up to full boost and by that time um, wide open throttle pulls over so that's a fixed car if you want to see more of these videos click the like and subscribe button down below